Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you how I make one of my favourite pendant designs, the double wooden twist or pikarua as it's known in Māori. An important skill to getting a good result is marking out. I've got a paper template that I'm drawing around with pencil and then I'm using an awl, this pointy thing, to mark in my centre points for the holes. I'm using a small off card of rosewood here but really any hardwood will work for you. Think walnut, maple or cherry. Next is to drill out the holes. I'm using a Dremel, but if you have a drill press or hand drill, just give that a bang. Alright, now if you have a band saw or a scroll saw, just skip a head to cut like a minute or something, because this will be painful to watch. Using my little Japanese pull saw, I'm trimming off the excess off the sides of the pendant. And then I pop it in the vise and make some cuts to work down to. Next, using a chisel, the goal is to simply get the edges down to the pencil line while keeping the sides pretty square. I'm using very simple wood carving tools here, just straight chisels and wood carving knife. The green tape on my fingers here is friction guard tape that prevents cuts. Notice as well that when I'm using the chisel, I hold it right at the blade, not at the handle. This gives me a lot more control over the fine controlled cuts that I'm making. So now that I've caught up to everyone with the bandsaw, I mark and score with my knife the lines of the twists on both faces of the pendant. As the twists are going to wrap around the pendant, make sure the pattern is identical on both faces, otherwise it won't look all beautiful and continuous around the length. Now using a V-tool, I'm cutting down the lower sections of the twist. A VTOL or number 12 gouge is not something that everyone will have on hand, but I highly recommend getting one if you're getting into wood carving. Now I'm redrawing my center lines. As I said earlier, marking out is super important. Using a chisel I start taking off the corners of the pendant to create a nice smooth face sloping down from the centre line. It's at this point that I remembered that I wanted to taper the pendant to be thinner at the top, so I mark and score points at the top and chisel it down to about half the original thickness. Now that I've done that, I can start putting more shape into the rest of the pendant. Always keep in mind grain direction when you're carving, and carve either with the grain or across the grain. Never against it, or you can get tear out. If you feel like you're having to apply extra force, recognize it and rethink your angle of approach. I find it helpful to do these hard cuts with the knife up against the face of the twist to get clean separation between the two elements. Make sure your tools are nice and sharp and creating nice clean surfaces. Cool, so the shape of the pendant is looking good. Now we're going to hit it with some sandpaper. I start at 120 grit and give it a thorough sanding to smooth out any of the facets. Alright, next we go 240 grit, then 400 grit, and then we wet the pendant and the sandpaper and wet sand at 400 grit again. This raises the grain. Alright, 600 grit, 
1200 grit. 2000 grit. There's a heap of sanding, but the end roof finish comes out really nice. All right, I'm finishing the pendant with walnut oil. I just bought this from the supermarket. Easy as, just wipe it on with rag, push it into those cracks real well, and then wipe off any excess. And there we go, the finished Pikurua pendant. All we need now is a string. I tend to just loop it through. Look up a tutorial for the necklace knots for the rest. Thanks to everyone for watching. Let me know if you'd be interested in seeing more of this content by checking us a like or a comment or subscribing to see more of these videos when I get around to doing them. Yeah, cheers, see you soon guys.